I'm Deborah Band, the artist and author of Kabbalat Shabbat, The Grand Unification. And as the book approaches publication in September 2016, I'm doing a series of little videos to share some of the wonderful paintings and spiritual poetry and thoughts within it. Right now, I'd like to tell you some of the backstory for my illuminated paintings of the one of the most popular of Shabbat table songs, Sur Michelot, Bless the Rock. So right now, we're in summer vacation season, and so many of us are just returning from or about to take our summer vacations or at least weekends away. And believe it or not, there is lots of stuff in this book's illuminated paintings that relates in one way or another to summertime and to my own travels. Okay, since we're talking about summer, which begins with graduation season, I have got to get a couple of things out of my system. There are many melodies for Tzur Michelot, but I grew up singing it to, believe it or not, the melody of Elgar's march, Land of Hope and Glory, infamous in the U.S. at least, at the customary college graduation march. When I was too young to remember, my parents were fooling around with melodies over one Shabbat dinner, and that, Land of Hope and Glory, is what stuck in our family. I was in my teens by then listening to classical music most of the time before I knew that this was not the original melody for this medieval song. And at each of my boys' university graduations, which were vast, interminable affairs at the University of Maryland, I sat in the stadium mumbling these Hebrew words for each of a thousand times the melody played over and over. Okay, I said it, now I can move on. Travels. One of my favorite things to do in Jerusalem, when I'm not haunting the Israel Museum, is just to wander among the tiny streets and alleys of the Jewish quarter. The walls are high and close, and so you're often walking through dim, shady paths. Every now and then, though, you emerge suddenly onto a sunlit, keyhole view of the broader plazas and landscape beyond the narrow streets. From outside the city walls, though, we have a much more expansive view. The illuminations of this last table song before the grace after meals celebrates and offers thanks for the joy of wonderful views of our sacred city and its environ. And not only do we have travel to and within Jerusalem reflected here, we also have travel through time. This first Hebrew painting does some time travel back to the second temple period city. We find ourselves traveling toward Jerusalem and have an idyllic view of the capital crowned by the temple, embedded in the vineyards, pastures, and fields of ripening grain that produce the food for which we thank God in the grace after meals. Here in the English um, painting, we find ourselves in the modern Jerusalem that I love to wander. Meandering around the Jewish quarter, we emerge from the narrow, shaded little streets into the sudden light of a courtyard overlooking the Western Wall Plaza. Nearby, the shadows give way to a view of a courtyard where, in the modern reunified city, children again play, calling to mind the prophet Zechariah's prophecy about the boys and girls of Jerusalem playing in the squares. Beneath a limitless, always evolving heavens, an eagle soars, reminding us of, as a midrash, God's eternal parenting of Israel. There's much more commentary, incidentally, both on the text and the symbolism of the paintings in my new book, Kabbalat Shabbat, The Grand Unification, that's appearing in September 2016. And in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this little taste. The book will be available on Amazon and in bookstores, and you can also order it from the webpage you see on the screen. Enjoy!